Well, to, to me personally, um, I feel that I've grown um, in my own understanding of Islam and the, the range within Islam. Um, and I feel as if um, I have real brothers and sisters from within Hizmet community and uh, really do count uh, members of the community as my friends. Um, but also for my students, it's been very valuable because the press, the media, paints Islam as bombing people and you know causing trouble, mayhem around the world. And here, my students have been able to encounter uh, Muslims who are far from that, you know, who stand very strongly against anything of that nature. And that experience of that direct connection with people um, who show... Um, true Islam, if you like, you know, put it that way, um, uh, has, has really been helpful for them as students to encounter that firsthand. And in a sense, whatever I might say in my lectures, uh, when they experience it themselves and feel the hospitality and the warmth and welcome, uh, that makes a, a big difference. was one occasion where I remember we were invited into the home of some people who uh, lived with a, a beautiful house overlooking the Bosphorus and um, they laid on a lovely spread of food for us um, and our students I think just couldn't believe that ordinary students were being treated uh, with this respect and honour um, this beautiful spread of food uh, laid out for them and the welcome that was given. And um, a, a point was made to find out their names, find out about them. There was genuine interest um, from the people. And that, several of the students said afterwards, that particular experience shifted something for them. Uh, they felt here were people from another culture, from another language, um, and we, we had to do some interpreting uh, in between uh, the communications. Um, uh, but from another religion as well, and particular religion that the media, the press had told them was something against them. And here was genuine love and concern and hospitality um, that, that just struck them as, as a, a new insight and uh, shifted something in them uh, that made them feel... Um, welcomed and honoured and respected and that was great. Um, there are some Muslim community institutions where I've taken students and it's been quite embarrassing where comments have been made about um, Christianity where some in the group might be practicing Christians and felt a little offended by what was said. Um, and um, sometimes um, I, uh, comments have been made about women and women's place in society. And that's been true in both um, some mosques that I've been to, but also uh, other religious institutions. I've never felt that anywhere within our, our visits to Hizmet communities. Um, always... The, the kind of values that Hizmet stands for, of dialogue, of understanding and, and welcome, um, hospitality, uh, nurturing of, of whole people, um, that's something that, that just resonates with me. And the more I've uh, both heard from uh, Hizmet people and, and read uh, their materials, the more convinced uh, I've become that their values very much reflect the values that I am drawn to. The first time uh, I went with a group to Turkey, um, it was about 10 years ago when I first um, came across the group, uh, there were just four of us went. It was two staff from here and one member of staff from the, the local Church of England diocese and a Roman Catholic. Uh, he was the director of education for the Roman Catholic diocese. And we went as just a group of four. And it was a kind of test them out kind of scenario. Uh, there must be some kind of hidden expectation behind this. Why are they offering us a, a free trip to Turkey? 
and we were put up in a very nice hotel and cared for uh, for the, I think we were there for four or five days. And um, we, we discussed amongst ourselves, you know, um, surely there must be something. There's no, um, people had said to us here in England, there's no such thing as a free lunch. They must have some reason for inviting you. There must be some secret thing there they're trying to get from you. Uh, so we went very much expecting that and came back with the exact opposite perspective, that we felt that rather than them trying to impose something, uh, the Hizmet people that we were meeting with were wanting to know about us, wanting to learn from us, wanting to uh, appreciate where we were coming from. And um, we certainly didn't feel uh, in any way uh, there was any attempt to uh, convert us over or uh, in any way um, do something that was underhand in that sense. It was completely... Through, through the dialogic that is... Very much so. They were not only telling you, but also listening. Genuinely listening, yeah. One of the things that struck me is how... Um, how the members of the Hizmet here in this country that I've known have remained calm and composed, and it would be very easy to jump up and down and say, you know, how would that possibly be, and uh, want to fight back. Um, but almost this, it's reminded me of Jesus when uh, he was captured, and he s said what he needed to say, um, but he, he, uh, in essence, he said, well, you've seen me, you've heard me, if I've done anything wrong, then you know you be my judges of that. And I've I felt that same sense coming from uh, members of his met that there's been a, a genuine um, integrity to the way that it's been handled. There's been an attempt to um, show that uh, the what has been done is incorrect. Um, there's been a, a gathering of evidence in a very sensible way, uh, as I see it to present the opposite case of what the, the present government of Turkey is presenting. And uh, I've been impressed increasingly with the, the manner in which it's been handled. And um, I, I hope that if I was being persecuted, that I would be able to act in the same kind of way. One of the courses I teach is to do with Huntington's clash of civilizations uh, idea. And we explore that and critique it during the course. It's part of our master's program. And um, uh, Fethullah Gulen is one of those people who stood out against that and said, yes, if we don't do anything, that will happen. But we can work against it. And um, let's do what we need to in order to make sure that we don't clash. Dialogue is a, is a key element of that. Education, another key element in order to make sure that we don't uh, fall into that trap, if you like, of clashing uh, because of ignorance and because of misunderstandings. Um, and uh, there is a way forward that leads to hope and a bright future. Um, but we've got to follow that intentionally rather than allow ourselves to be dragged in by um, some who... Uh, almost encourage and nurture that sense of separateness and, and difference, um, which leads to conflict, I think. Hizmet people have been very successful. They've emphasized education, uh, emphasized um, living a good life, and that makes people successful because um, it means they, when they do something, they do it to their best ability and they become uh, elite. <laughs> they become special. And many business people within Hizmet have become very powerful. Many uh, educators have made their way up through the ranks. Um, their newspaper became the leading uh, newspaper in, in Turkey. Um, and that's a wonderful thing, but it, it actually also makes other people jealous. Now, I don't know how you handle that, um, and I'm not quite sure what you do about it, but it's a danger, and uh, I, th I think it's worth any group 
being aware of where it potentially might be upsetting other people. Um, I think of the story of Joseph from the Bible who had these dreams and there was something very special about him, but his brothers hated him for it. And you know, it, uh, what is happening to his met at the moment may be partly that it's become strong and it's become... Um, uh, it's lifted people up and, and enabled them and made them influential and, and significant. And when you're in that position, there's always someone who feels disenfranchised and, and wants to get you back for it. And uh, that's human nature. Um, uh, it's, I think, the Achilles heel of uh, his movement at the moment. <laughs>